These bitches want Nikes. They looking for a check. Tell them it ain't likely. <laughs> Blonde by Frank Ocean is an album that amongst my friends I was actually quite notorious for not liking. It was easily one of my hottest musical takes, one of the most critically acclaimed and fan loved albums that I just personally never got with. And what this video was originally intended to be was the start of a new series that I'll probably start again sometime in the future. Basically the idea of the series is just me explaining why I don't love critically acclaimed albums or classics or just albums that the majority of people seem to love but I just personally don't like. And this was going to be the first video in that series. But the one problem is, when I went back and revisited this album, and I mean, it was probably like the 20th time I've listened to this thing. I listened to this thing uh, probably just three months ago, still didn't like it. Like, it's not like I just haven't heard this since it came out. Like, I have consistently been trying and trying to sing over and over again to try and get the hype. I never got it. So I go to listen to this thing one last time just so I can take some notes for this video. And at, I guess at the very last possible second, this, this thing finally clicks with me. And I'm just left wondering what the fuck was wrong with me the past three years. This album is amazing. I'm here just crying to self-control thinking like why the fuck did I used to not like this song and this album because this shit is amazing. So that kind of just completely changed the course of what was going to happen here and I just decided you know what I'm still going to make the video but uh, instead of me shitting all over this thing I'm just going to be praising it because it turns out that I was wrong and everyone else was right and it actually is a fantastic piece of art. Now the opening song on here Nike's I've actually always liked and in fact it's weird like I've always loved this song. I used to always think man why can't the rest of the album be as good as this song. Turns out it actually kind of is but you know when I didn't like it that's what I used to always think and honestly like this is one of my favorite songs of all time like I'm talking top 25 material so for, and it's funny because I feel like a lot of people who like this album at least that I know this is like their least favorite song and it was the one song that I actually thought was incredible but anyways it, it still is my favorite song on here and uh, it just it's just such a mesmerizing entrancing hypnotic song and it's like it's one of those songs that anytime that I'm going through any type of existen existential crisis anytime it's like 2 a.m. and I'm just thinking about life like this is the type of shit you put on in a moment like that and it just kind of like transports you into this really spacey headspace that is just like it's, it's almost impossible to describe, but it's just so emotionally vulnerable. It just like pierces you right in your soul. With its celestial synths and cavernous drums, it builds such a thick, heady atmosphere that completely envelops me anytime I listen to it. And those shimmering strings that come in at the start of the second verse, they just add to the mesmerizingly magical feeling of the song. Frank's pitch shifted vocals may be irritating for some, but I feel like they perfectly match the tone of the song and add to its luminous aura. There's some really poignant lyrics on here too, like the line where he says, he don't care for me, but he cares for for me and that's good enough. There's something really sad to me just about the acceptance of he may not actually like me but just the fact that he's willing to be around like I'll take that just like kind of having to settle for something like that but just that being good enough in his life I don't know and the way he delivers it it's just it's kind of really melancholic and then there's also the line where he says I'm not him but I'll mean something to you again he's like kind of accepting like look I know that I'm not what you want there's probably someone you like better than me but like I'll be there for you kind of just like please stay in my life and I don't know there's just a really sad sentiment it feels like he knows he's not good enough he knows he's not what this person wants but it's someone that he wants to keep in his life and uh, it's it's good enough for him he'll take what he can get like this is the best he can do. Ivy has such a tenderness to it even before you listen into the lyrics it tugs at your emotions and provokes a strong sense of nostalgia just with the supple guitar and Frank's yearning vocal tone. Frank is reminiscing on a failed romance from his youth looking back and longing. This entire album it, it's kind of based around an internal struggle of identity that Frank has that is sometimes also conflicting with the external world. And seeing him ponder an old flame seems to infer his insatisfaction with the present, questioning why it is he hasn't been able to make things work with people in the past, even someone who seemed like a dream to him at first. I mean, this is put really powerfully and bluntly on the chorus with the line, I thought that I was dreaming when you said you loved me, the start of nothing. The harsh vocal effects that overtake his voice in the closing lines show his frustration finally seeping through, having suppressed it the rest of the song for a more rose-colored view of the past that is now fading. Pink and White is one of the prettiest songs that I've ever heard. While the rest of this album has a very solemn nighttime -y vibe. This is one of the most sunny and summery songs that I've ever heard in my life. With the golden guitar, the sparkling piano, Beyonce's angelic backing vocals, and even the sounds of birds chirping in the background. Be Yourself is an interesting segue into solo because we have the voicemail of a mother who's telling her son not to smoke weed because it'll make him sluggish, lazy, stupid, and unconcerned. But then on solo, one of the main components of that song is Frank singing about how weed is one of the only things that brings any sense of joy to him and that alleviates any pain from his life. On the chorus, he sings, Inhale, Inhale, There's Heaven, which aside from being some clever wordplay with the inhale, 
in hell thing is also a really stark statement on the quality of his life right now and what he does to cope with it. If smoking is the one thing that lifts him up and it's taking him out of hell and into heaven, then that really says that his everyday life is hell. Every day he's facing this constant pain inside of him and it's just so insanely hard to cope with that the one thing that gives him release is smoking. So with Be Yourself setting this song up, you see the judgmental attitude of people around Frank towards his drug habits, which probably only makes life rougher for him and only further conflicts his mental state. These people may only be passing judgment because they think it's best for Frank, but they also seem to fail to see the deep-seated sadness inside of him that causes him to do this. It sounds like drugs may be the only thing currently getting him through life. I think the line in the chorus about the bull and the matador dueling in the sky not only reflects his internal struggles, but also shows him having to deal with criticisms from loved ones. This song also has one of my favorite vocal performances from Frank on the project, sounding gorgeous on the chorus and then using a really distinctive delivery in the verses where he's simultaneously super melodic and yet also doing this kind of spoken word thing at the same time. I used to find the sparse guitar-led instrumental of self-control to be utterly dull, but in one of the many changes of heart that I had with this album, I now see it as endlessly earnest, fragile, and captivating. And of course, the outro on here is absolutely stunning. The song also has one of my favorite lines on the album, where he says, wish I was there, wish we grew up on the same advice. I think that's such a simplistic way to capture a really complex thing in the sense that two people can be compatible in every single way, but at the end of the day, if they have different worldviews that have been ingrained in them from childhood, you know, just the way they were raised, they just have different outlooks on life at the end of the day, even if it's by a slim margin, you may be able to be compatible and get along fine for a while, but you kind of know at the end of the day, if, if that those worldviews are just, you know, not clicking, there's going to be a breaking point. To me, Good Guy is a really important song lyrically in the context of the album because it highlights how his search for identity is not only internal and how he's in a constant disconnect with the outside world. He went on this date hoping it could have led to something serious, but the whole night he can see that for this other guy it was only ever meant to be a one-time thing and Frank doesn't blame him for this. He understands it's natural, but again, it just shows how Frank is lost within himself. He feels disconnected with the outside world and the world does not seem to want to be compatible with him. On nights, I love how it seems that for Frank, the night and day are starting to blend together. He's staying awake through both and he's just kind of lost in time. Maybe another reason I came around on this album was being able to relate to some of the lyrical themes more than I have been in the past, making them hit harder because I know that feeling of only getting a couple hours of sleep a week, staying up for days at a time and how that just completely destroys your mental state, sends it into a complete mess or worse of one if you were already there. This idea along with his cyclical experiences with drugs dating and work just presents this guy who despite living out the same experiences over and over again can't seem to find a rhythm in his life. Also, this song, of course, has that iconic beat switch, and yeah, it's amazing. This section straight up sounds like how it feels when I look up at the moon and the stars on a really reflective night. The cold piano, the deep woozy synths, it's yet another wholly transfixing moment on this album, of which there are many. Solo Reprise is the only song on here that I've consistently liked from the first time I heard the album until now. Yes, I have liked Nikes for a long time, but that still didn't come until maybe my third or fourth listen to the album, whereas on my original go-through, this was the one song that I was like, okay, this is amazing, and how could you not like this song? It's just Andre 3000 spitting some really head-spinning flows, a really nuanced rhyme scheme, and some really reflective and great bars. Pretty Sweet is one of my favorite moments musically on here. I love the claustrophobic, clashing medley of strings and noises that Frank's voice seems like it's trying eagerly to escape, so when it finally clears way, it feels like he's just emerged from some hectic storm into a calm paradise. To me, this part is kind of a musical representation of what he's expressing earlier on the album on the solo chorus, and we're hearing how it feels for him to escape his personal hell by taking drugs. The two song sequence of Facebook Story and Close to You I think is actually really brilliant. I can't take credit for what I'm about to say here. I actually remember that Ken from Dead and Hip Hop said this in their review, but I thought it was actually such a, a fantastic observation that I couldn't not mention it here because every time I listen to the album it definitely amplifies my enjoyment. The fact that in Facebook Story he's talking about how he's kind of baffled at the fact that this girl is so obsessed with him uh, uh, not letting her on his Facebook. He's like, he's like, what do you mean? I'm, he I'm here in real life. Like, I, I want to be with you in real life. Who cares about what's happening uh, on this technology? And that's kind of getting in the way of their relationship. But then on Close to You, you have Frank singing about wanting to be 
close to someone, but you have these really mechanical uh, effects on his voice. So, it, you know, it kind of represents musically like technology getting in the way, like the technology is getting in the way of his voice, which is representative of technology getting in the way of him getting close to that person. So that little like, it's like two song a section. I just think that if that's what Frank intended, I think that's absolutely brilliant. On White Ferrari, the melancholic opaque synths create a sea of gloom that cradles Frank as he reminisces about what sounds like it could potentially be his most impactful relationship to date. And there's so many heartbreaking lines across this song, like when he says, I care for you still and I will forever. That was part of the deal. Siegfried features another one of Frank's best vocal performances, his cries of I'd rather live outside sending chills down my spine, and his singing on the outro being so expertly delicate. I love the echoey wasteland of an instrumental on here with little flourishes coming here or there like the slick arpeggios around the two minute mark and the lavish strings that appear midway through. And things come to a close on a very high note with Futura Free, where dramatic piano chords, reverse sounding noises, bubbling synths, skittering drums, and static samples are all thrown together in a way that feels super off kilter. This then breaks for a more chill section where Frank's auto-tuned vocals sound strangely satisfying and the drum groove is utterly infectious when it kicks in. Lyrically, this is one of the most reflective moments on the album, which is very appropriate for the closer with some great lines like, play these songs, it's therapy mama, they paying me mama, I should be paying them. Basically saying that these songs for him are just an outlet for him to kind of express what's going on in his mental health just like where he's at right now and maybe these songs by writing them they even kind of help him find himself and then I'm just a guy I'm not a god sometimes I feel like a god but I'm not a god I mean the way that's written maybe it's a bit repetitive but I just like the idea of how everyone idolizes Frank so much I mean like to a crazy extent like a lot of people are idolized but the way that people treat frank they literally do treat him like a god and the way that he acts like he's not in the public eye much at all he really is almost like some sort of divine figure i guess when you kind of just see how rare an appearance from him is and uh, he's just saying that like he doesn't feel like he deserves that title he's saying like sometimes maybe i do like sometimes maybe i see myself that highly but overall like I i'm not a god like and people treating me this way i don't know it it's just something for him that is very weird but yeah I still can't really believe my experience with this album uh, up to this date my weirdest experience with an album was with Die Lit where I originally hated it but then like a couple months later I grew to love it but this is almost this is a whole other level because this took years and again like I said at the start it's not like I just listened to it when it came out and came back to it now and saw it grew on me I, I've tried this album 15 to 20 times easily I've heard these songs played by my friends multiple multiple times individually and there was no even slight progression. The last time I listened to this album uh, three months ago, I still hated it just as much as I did when it first came out. There was no growth at all. And then randomly, all of a sudden, boom, like lights just flashing in my head uh, when I heard it again for the first time recently. And of course, I've been listening to it a ton now recently that I think it's fantastic. But it's just, I, I just frankly, I don't understand what was going on because and what, I, what I don't understand the most is like how I used to have this as about a four out of 10. But just listening to it now, I don't understand how it could be unpleasant at all. Like, I could understand maybe if I thought it was a 6 out of 10, but it just didn't resonate with me emotionally like it does now. But the fact that I actually thought that a lot of these songs sounded genuinely bad, I don't know where that comes from. Like, Frank's voice is incredible. Like, the uh, the instrumentals on here, whether I thought they were dull or not, they all sound very good. Like, the production on here is uh, is immaculate, essentially, in, at least in terms of engineering and sound quality. So yeah, I, I don't know what it was, but we're here now. Better late than never. I'm finally on the right side of history. And yeah, th this is a nine out of 10. Uh, who knows like how that'll go in the future. Maybe this will become a fucking perfect 10 out of 10 for me. Maybe it'll drop down a little bit to an eight, but I, I don't think that's the case because I'm, I'm kind of wowed by it now as I hear it. Like when I hear songs like Knight's White Ferrari, like Jesus, those are just some of the best songs I've probably ever heard. And it's funny because like I've been hearing them for years and I never would have said that until like two days ago but hey here we are Frank Ocean's Blonde it, it, it is pretty much a masterpiece and uh, yeah it's probably going to be a future classic I hate to use that term but I mean if any albums are safe to call that it's to pimp a butterfly and blonde let's be real so whatever there it is I finally get you guys this album's amazing I hope you enjoyed my uh, review of it and I uh, hope you're I hope you're glad that I came around here but yeah thank you guys as always for watching and I'll see you next time but if you need dick, I got you, and I am from the line. Oh, awful ASAP.